Are cyber attacks increasing the cost of health care? Why you shouldn't roll your own encryption? And oh boy, more foreign hackery goodness. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Happy Monday, people. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for May 11th, 2015, your summary of the threats to security, privacy, and internet freedom. I'd like to start with a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the relaunch of ThreatWire. We couldn't be more proud of this awesome community, and if you're new to ThreatWire on the Hack5 channel, this is the show we did for a year on TechFeed, and now we've brought it back. So with that, let's get started. First up, cost of health insurance ticking you off. Then you'll love the Bloomberg story that says, quote, rising cyber attacks costing health system $6 billion annually. Bloomberg's info comes from the Ponemon Institute, not the Pokemon, the Ponemon Institute. And the article says, quote, criminal attacks against healthcare providers have more than doubled in the past five years, with the average data breach costing a hospital $2.1 million. Now, Ponemon is a security research and consulting firm, duh. The report goes on to say that Quote, nearly 90% of healthcare providers were hit by breaches in the past two years, half of them criminal in nature. Why? Well, at least in the case of the criminal attacks, it's probably money. Dell SecureWorks told Bloomberg that medical records, quote, sell for as much as 20 times the price of a stolen credit card number and include such juicy details as social security numbers, addresses, and of course, your medical info. And hey, with big retailers hardening their credit card processing systems, thanks to high profile attacks on chains like Target and Home Depot, poorly secured medical systems must look like low hanging fruit that is ripe for the taking. Note to self, I gotta go check my credit report and make sure the credit freeze, also known as a credit report freeze, lockdown, credit lock, or security freeze is still in place. That prevents my credit report from going out without my consent, which makes it a lot harder for identity theft to happen. You just have to remember to lift it a few days before you apply for credit or a loan or whatever legitimate uses for access to your credit report might be. Now, it might cost you 10 bucks to freeze or unfreeze your credit report or cost all three credit agencies, but seriously, how much is dealing with identity theft gonna cost you in comparison? Meanwhile, Google Map Maker will, quote, be temporarily unavailable for editing starting May 12, 2015, and all edits are now going through a manual review process thanks to, quote, escalated attacks to spam Google Maps. The straw that broke this particular camel's back, well, outside of the only problem with community being community, is that, well, apparently a strong user in the Google Maps community chose to go and create a large-scale prank on the map. So until the Maps team figures out a way to, quote, review edits at roughly the rate they come in, well, they're shutting them down. Down, taking a pause from all, well, community editing of Google Maps. By the way, Search Engine Land has a slightly different perspective on this than Google's this is why we can't have nice things response. Search Engine Land points out that the recent public edits were made to show how easy it is to make fraudulent edits to businesses and that, quote, it took one man's efforts, Brian Seeley, to expose these loopholes to the world to force Google to take down MapMaker, at least until the loophole is covered. Smart grids are cool, smart meters on your power are awesome, but home chrome crypto generally sucks. Seriously, uh, we're talking about the Open Smart Grid Protocol here. Kapersky's blog hipped us to dumb crypto and smart grids, practical crypto analysis of the Open Smart Grid Protocol, which apparently is open to a whole bunch of pathetically easy attacks. Now, the OSGP is preparing an update to add new security features, and in one sense, I'm not sure how worried I am about smart meters being attacked or smart thermostats, or at least I wasn't until I started thinking about bored script kitties being bored script kitties and making my life or bill a tremendous pain. Another cheerful news, if you're strapping wireless monitors to yourself, hey Apple Watch, hey cycling computer, hey GPS enabled inhaler, you might want to check out the Washington Post story, quote, the revolution will be digitized, a not so technical romp through some of the many social and legal issues created by all your personal data cataloging. And the New York Times is a pretty good look at just what's happened as a result of the Obama administration's strategy on mitigating the theft of U.S. trade secrets. Is it really stopping foreign hackers? Can they be stopped, period, without, say, declaring war? Go forth and educate yourself. And while you're educating yourself, try reading about how Russia and China have pledged not to hack each other. That's up on the Wall Street Journal. And links for all the stories are in the show notes right down below. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported ThreatWire so far on Patreon. If you find value from this program and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming our patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We're hoping to reach our three times a week milestone goal. That's going to be Darren Kitchen, Shannon Morris, and myself rotating throughout the 
the week. So throughout the month of May, we'll be giving you a taste of just what that can be. I hope you'll contribute to help us keep coming independent and ad-free. And if you can't donate, a like, a share, and a subscribe goes a very long way, too. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you out on the Internet. Yeah. <laughs>